What's up creators? In today's video, I'll be showing you how to achieve a cinematic look with your iPhone using the Light Chaser Pro Filmmaking Kit to get better video results. If you're like me, I like having an easy setup for shooting video when I'm on the go. A week ago, my girlfriend and I took a trip around Switzerland to take some time off. I took this case with me and I wanted to share my opinion and results with you. So with no further ado, let's get started. I got the Polar Pro case which helps protect the iPhone and the lenses. You also get a nice grip which you can clamp onto the case. The great part is that you can mount it on different points. I find it comfortable having it this way. It feels like I'm holding a professional camera and it really helps getting steadier shots. With the one quarter thread mount, you can mount it on a tripod or on different accessories, which makes it more versatile to use. You can also place it on the ground, which works too. The grip is easily detachable by pressing the button downwards. You can also invert the handle and use it vertically if you're filming for Instagram. When I'm on the run, I leave the grip attached. The filter I leave off because I find that whenever I take it out of my pocket, it falls off. So I usually attach the filter afterwards. The great thing is that I can really grab it out of my pocket, attach the filter, and I'm ready to shoot. Let's move on to the filters. With the Light Chaser Pro Kit, you get a polarizer and the variable ND filter. They can easily be attached to the lens, and a great part is that it covers all three lenses, which means that you can switch between different lenses, not having to change the filter like you normally would on a DSLR camera. The way how the variable ND filter works is that by turning it, I can control the amount of light passing through the lens. You can control around three to five stops. Now, the reason why you want to limit the light passing through the lens is because of the shutter speed. The standard shutter speed for film cameras is one over 50 of a second. The goal here is really to mimic motion the same way we experience with our own human eyes. There is a rule called the 180 shutter rule, which states that you should double your frame rate to get that organic motion blur. So if you look at my hand waving and pause the frame, you will see that it's blurry. If you now wave your hands in front of your own eyes, you will notice that it appears sort of blurry too. And that is the motion blur we want to get in our camera. This helps making the video look more real. With the filter, I can set my shutter speed to one over 50 of a second at 4K 25 frames per second without overexposing the image. Now, Polar Pro doesn't recommend using the variable ND filter for ultra wide lens because you get some weird artifacts on the edge. They recommend using the solid ND8 and ND64 filter. So if you want to get better video results with the ultra wide lens, you might want to switch to the solid ND. So with the kit, you also get a polarizer that cuts out reflections, for example, the water or of a window. This is also great for taking pictures since using polarizer will also give you uh, rich colors, especially of the sky, making it bluer. To really have full control over your your camera, you would want to use an advanced camera video app. The one I'm familiar with is Filmic Pro. Now I will show you how to set everything up. Set up your resolution to 4K using the Filmic Extreme codec, which will give you the highest quality possible. As for the frame rate, I use 25 frames per second, and if I want to switch to slow motion, I use 50 frames per second. Looking at the camera viewer, the circle controls the exposure and will automatically adjust the correct exposure for your shot. So as I move the circle, you can see how the exposure changes changes. The square sets the focus. If I tap on one of the reticles, I can lock it. This way I can lock my exposure, preventing it from changing. Open up the manual controls by tap holding on the circle. A slider to the left will appear. The number on the top is the ISO and the number below controls the shutter speed. What I usually do is keep my ISO as low as possible and lock it by tapping on it. When I move the slider, the only thing that changes is the shutter speed. We want to have our shutter speed to be double our frame rate. So because I'm shooting in 25 frames per second, we want our shutter speed to be 1 over 50 of a second to get that natural motion blur that we have been talking about previously. Now with these settings applied normally on a sunny day without the ND filter, I would have gotten an overexposed image. As you can see, the circle is red, which means that it's locked. Now I can control the focus manually if I want or lock it by tapping on it. 
Now that we have that set, we can go over to our white balance. The auto white balance does a great job, but what you want to avoid is color shifting during recording. So lock it by pressing the auto white balance button to make it turn red. You can also use the built-in presets, which works as well. Next, I will change my color profile to log V2. That gives me the most dynamic range in my image and also allows me to have more flexibility when color grading in post. Now that we have that set, let's talk about camera movement. If you're shooting hand held, I recommend leaving the image stabilization on to counteract with your motion, easing it out. I preferably like to use a gimbal. When using a gimbal, I recommend turning the image stabilization off in camera. The one I like using is the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. Make sure to balance it correctly before using it. It works really great with the case and allows you to get unique camera movements, whereas doing it handheld, there are certain limits to it. So as I've mentioned, I took this case with me, tested it out handheld with my gimbal, and here are the results I got from it. You are soon reaching your destination. Overall, I'm really satisfied with the video. Now you won't get the exact results as if you would with a mirrorless camera, mostly because of the missing shallow depth of field. Don't get me wrong, you can get the background out of focus if you get really close to your subject. You know, videos on phones used to look like this. Yes, that was me dancing back in 2007. With the newest smartphones in the market, people can't really differentiate if it was taken on a smartphone or not, especially when watched on a small screen. Smartphones have come a long way and I'm really amazed how far they came. Keep in mind that this kit is currently available for iPhone 11 version and Galaxy S20 Ultra. I haven't seen a good version of this and I think they are the best out there so far. Polar Pro really creates high quality products and they have been in the game for a long time. Let me know what you think of the Light Chaser Pro. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can keep pushing out these videos for you guys. Follow me on Instagram at Bennett Grazer. Now, before I say goodbye, I wanted to let you know that it takes practice shooting video on your iPhone. That is why I got two videos right here ready for you to watch that will instantly help grow your mobile filmmaking skills. So make sure to check these out. Thank you so much for watching guys. Stay creative and I will see you in the next video.